What's going on, YouTube Metal Complex here, and welcome to what I think is episode 28 of The Knife Guy. I will make sure that the thumbnail reads the accurate episode. Um, if you are new to this series, or you just came out of some weird corner of the internet and you have no idea where you are or who I am, um, I am a knife guy. I am a knife enthusiast, knife collector, knife user, person who enjoys knives and cutlery of many types. And uh, like, uh, like many of you knife guys and knife gals out there, um, I uh, started with uh, a, a pocket knife and was using it for cutting and then um, slowly, um, you know, grew this uh, into a full-blown obsession with folding knives, right? And uh, while we all have different paths, we all have unique paths, there are many situations, may, many circumstances that uh, we share our paths intersect, as I usually say. And uh, that's what this show is about. Essentially, um, every Sunday I like to lay out a bunch of knives that are either mine or were uh, knives lent to me by generous viewers uh, for review. And I like to just pick them up and flip them and talk about them. This uh, It was inspired, honestly, by Jim Skelton's um, knife ramble videos. I used to just watch them and, and flip my own knives and just sort of listen. And I know you guys like to do that. You like to uh, uh, sit back on the couch with your favorite knife or knives and flip them. Uh, or you like to do chores and uh, listen. Or some of you uh, tell me you like to throw this playlist on and just drive and listen to it. Uh, that is so flattering. I love that. I love that uh, you do that. For those of you who can't watch because you're driving, I will try to make sure there are lots of knife noises for you to enjoy. <laughs> um, but uh, anyways, so what's the topic today? So... Um, we are we are in the holiday season, and I realize you know that's that's true for my American viewers. I have a lot of viewers uh, that are from uh, countries who don't celebrate the exact same holidays. That's fine, but I think you'll you'll all still be able to relate to this. So I know everybody's like, can we get a look, look at that? The Jason Clark custom Spanish tip. Good God, <laughs> that thing's crazy. Anyways, uh, this is something that I think about. Uh, all the time in the holidays, um, and I think about it in a lot of different situations. This is another episode that might be overlapping a little bit with something else, but there are certain situations, like I always carry a knife, right? And a lot of times it's just like, you know, a lot of you know, like here's my, these are some of the primary knives in my rotation right now. The Shaman is like these and the Shaman, let me grab, grab him real quick. Sometimes the Manix too. These are the knives that I carry like the most often, right? Bug Out, Para 3, uh, Ritter Hogue, Para 2, Manix 2, and Shaman. Those are, those are knives that I carry all the time. And most of the time it's just like, which one today? You know, and I just grab one and I go. And here lately, it's been one of these guys because they're a little bit easier to carry, a little lighter. And this guy is very new and I'm just enjoying him and all the custom parts that I put on him. Uh, but sometimes... I um, will carry something a little bit different, something a little more exotic, this uh, this uh, Zeba that uh, was given to me by Jeff. Um, and it's when I know that I'm going to be in a situation where the knife might be needed and be viewed by more people who either might enjoy knives or don't, I don't know, well, for whatever reason. And I so then I think about it a little more, right? Um, if I'm going somewhere where I'm gonna be around a bunch of knife people, who might be impressed by something really cool. Maybe I'm, you know, cause I live in Kansas. Maybe I would carry something like this. This isn't mine. This is Mr. Uh, Spirited Whiskey's. Um, we haven't talked about it yet. You know, just because it's cool, people are like, whoa, Switchblade, you know? Or maybe I would carry something, uh, you know, maybe I would carry my XM, you know, just so I could uh, show, like if I, my fellow knife guys who are, you know, not, haven't quite graduated into anything like this. Uh, maybe they just want to see it. But there is not, for me, there is nothing, for whatever reason, this is so weird, there's nothing more, like, that I think about, that there's two holidays for a reason, at Thanksgiving, my Thanksgiving Day carry, and I guess maybe it's because I'm gonna, like, cut, like, cheese, or I'm gonna cut turkey with it, I don't know, I, I don't do that, but I don't know why I think about it, my Thanksgiving Day uh, carry, and my Christmas carry, Christmas morning what knife am i going to be carrying between my ex my extended family on my wife's side and my family every single person in my family has a pocket knife now so everybody's got their own pocket knives and i get them new pocket knives every year for christmas you know usually budget knives and we all open our packages with our with our knives and it's it's just fun 
My wife's side, no, not so much. I'm I'm the guy with the knife on Christmas morning. Otherwise, I have to sit there and watch them all struggle with scissors. And it's really funny. The same thing generally have. If my wife watches this episode, she's gonna roll her eyes and be like, "You you are so lame." I'll watch them struggle with scissors or something, you know, like a box cut or something with a uh, with a package, and then they finally will give up and go. You know, hey, do you have your knife? And I'm like, yeah, no problem. But you're gonna have to give the package to me because I want to go. But um, so, for, so on on Christmas morning, I might carry something a little bit more like this, just because it's fun. Um, and even if it's not the most ideal package opener, it's still better than scissors. It'll still do the job ten times better than scissors. And I get to I get to look cool at the same time. You know, there's something about. Be, and this is going to sound really snobby. There's something around being around people who are not like as they're they're not like knife people, right? And they're unaware of exactly how you know the all the utilitarian benefits of a folding knife. And you you realizing that you're you're going to be in an opportunistic setting um, to uh, to assist them in cutting something, and at the same time possibly introduce them to your hobby, right? I do this, a lot of knife people don't, but I'm always looking for people to be like, hey, so what do you think of pocket knives? <laughs> you know, like I always do that. And then, you know, they're like, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, yeah, they help and they've got a package, you know, that they've got to cut open. I'm like, let me get that for you, you know, with uh, with some crazy, you know, ridiculous, uh, I know you guys want to see the uh, action on the Norseman, so there you go. Uh, Harry or Shaker, you want to see the action on this guy? There you go, very cool. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's definitely a thing. Other other events that I find myself thinking more often, um, we you know we haven't gone in recent uh, years, but uh, sometimes I attend um, a uh, it's a bluegrass festival in this area, um, and we go for uh, three or four days at a time. And uh, you know here lately I've only been able to attend like once every two or three years. But my carry for that event is very uh, very particular. M you know mostly because I'm going to be gone for three or four days, but also because I'm outside camping for three days, it's not, it's not really camping. I mean, we, everybody brings everything with them that, you know, all the luxuries of living in your home, except, you know, and it, but, but it's still important because I'm going to be using it more often and I'm going to be around people that I like, but don't get to see as often that I might want to share my hobby with. Um, for whatever reason, a car show, any sort of outdoor event here in Kansas, I think more about my carry than if I'm just going to work, right? It, it just is different for whatever reason. Um, sometimes, you know, definitely like talking about uh, that, uh, that um, music festival that I go to, um, I am much more likely to carry something like this than something like this, you know? And a lot of people are like, well, you spend, a lot, you know, people tell me like, you got this hinderer that's like built to like handle anything and you won't use it. I, you know, if I feel like I'm going to really be on a knife, then it's probably going to be something that I know is going to be practical and I know is, um, you know, not going to break my heart if I break it or lose it or something. Um, you guys know here recently, I kind of concluded my quest for the perfect budget knife series naming the Civivi Prax. This is probably one of, if not the very best budget knives out there. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just, it's funny how we think about stuff like that. And I get excited about it. Um, I, uh, I will, I will stop and look over things and think like, well, I might, you know, I might have to like chop up some fruit or something. So maybe I want like a really thin flat ground blade or, you know, maybe I'm going to be using it hard every now and then I go and you guys know, um, I've said it many times. I, um, you know, we're, we're constantly like updating things in our house or adding onto our house. So I have certain knives that I use for that kind of stuff all the time. Actually, I'll give you an example of the knives that I really use the most, um, the Cold Steel Tough Light and the Rat have both been used and beat on and, and resharpened multiple times over because they get used so much. And those are my, like, at, I'm, I'm at home, I'm working, I'm not thinking about, you know, the the knives or I'm not in, you know, my, my dad and brother know, you know, so it's pointless to like, you know, constantly show them new things and that's usually who's helping me. But if I'm going to help my dad back in my hometown, if I'm going to go work there around um, some of his, uh, I'm not actually using the Rainbow Lady to see as an example in this story. I'm just flipping it out. By the way, speaking of Rainbow Lady, 
any of these that uh, are not like the crazy, you know, like obviously the discontinued um, Infidel and the Shamwari and the XM18 and the Norseman and the custom Jason uh, Clark. Uh, I'm not going to have links for those, but a lot of this other stuff down there, there's going to be links along with my Wea Bit Selector that I use all the time on the channel and the Magnetic Driver, very inexpensive items. There's also EDC tools and flashlights down there. Um, and then of course, a lot of the really, really popular EDC knives that I show every single time I do a video on this channel. So if you've got an itch and it needs to be scratched, take a look at my description. There is definitely something down there for everybody. But uh, anyway, if I'm going to work uh, uh, with my dad, and be around his crew, his work crew, then I need to choose a very specific knife. I need to choose a knife because it's, number one, it's gonna get used. I don't know what we're doing, you know, well, I don't know if we're tearing off a roof or we're doing demolition. If we're doing demolition, well, you gotta, you gotta choose really careful if you're doing gem demolition. That might be the only time I bring a fixed blade with me. You know, like the best, uh, Oh my gosh, the best, like, if I was going to knock, a lot of times um, when uh, we do a demolition job, it's like some, it's like some farmer's old shed that's like not being used. He's got a new tool shed and he's got this old crappy shed on his property and it's like leaning and flying. It needs to be knocked down. It needs to be cleaned up. So we're going to go in and we're either going to smash it or we're going to knock out some of the supports and then we're going to knock it over with a, a back or something. And then we're going to clean it up and we're just going to huck everything into a dump truck and take off, Right. There are situations where a fixed blade would come in handy. And this uh, more knife Robust, which I will also try. I don't know why I don't have a link for that. This is a super cheap. Have you guys ever watched? I'm going to go on a tangent here for a second. <laughs> have you watched the, um, oh my gosh, what is that channel where these guys just destroy, like they do their best to break this knife and they can't. It's the, uh, the Bushcraft guys. Um, I don't know. I can't remember. But this is a super cheap fixed blade, and it is close to indestructible. I mean, they torture this thing, and it's fine. It takes till the very end to finally just crack this back part, right? I might choose something like this because if I'm working with somebody, if I'm working with one of his guys, and I want an opportunity to show, you know, I, I love when people ask me, like, what do you got? What, what is that? What are you using there? Oh, you mean this? I've Zell, Zell, I know if you're watching uh, this, is Zell, Zell was the one who really gave me my first uh, Mora to take a look at. Um, and actually, this particular Mora um, was actually given, uh, or not that one, but a, a Mora just like that was given as a gift to uh, Jeff and uh, the gentleman who, Herakris actually, and then I looked at that and I handled it and I was like, I want one of those for myself, so I got one. Because I'm gonna use it as a point later on in the, in the series, or in the show, or in the on the channel. But anyways, um, I would love to uh, have an opportunity to have a good working tool that actually makes sense on a job like that um, and at the same time be able to um, you know recommend it or give a good example to somebody who would be both interested and um, you know might uh, take a liking to cutlery. I mean that's that's the whole point of this channel is just to spread this. I, I want this channel to be a beacon of like, hey, people who are new and slightly interested, come here and let me make you obsessed. I mean, that's <laughs> in a way that's kind of toxic, but I like the idea of putting a good folding knife in everybody's pocket, regardless of their location on earth or their, uh, you know, their budget or, you know, what, whatever, what limitations, you know, whatever. I like that idea. So in a situation like that, I definitely, definitely think about it. Um, and, uh, you know, on a, on a uh, job where it might not call for a fixed blade, but definitely a really, really good um, uh, knife that's going to be strong, um, but uh, it's definitely still going to be able to cut, you know, then definitely, uh, depending on where I'm at, if I'm going to be laying down a lot, I don't want some big bulky thing in my pocket. It might be the Doman. It might be the, uh, the um, Praxis. It might be um, something like, this isn't mine, but it might be the, the Rat 1. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different um, options there, but I think about it, right? There, there are situ And that's the same for all of us. There are situations where you think about what you're going to carry, and there are situations where you don't. And what, why you think about it um, is different for every person, but you're kidding yourself if you don't think at least a little bit about the people you're going to be around, whether or not they're going to be offended by... Um, Crap this big guy. 
Um, you know, if you're going to a if you're going to a cocktail party around a whole bunch of people who are number one not carrying knives and number two have never really thought of pocket knives as anything else other than scary weapony things, the Cold Steel Luzon is not the knife you should carry. Now, if you're gonna go to a um, Let's say you're gonna go to a, a, a dinner party, right? Around some people that you know really well and who know you really well. None of them are into pocket knives, but you know at some point during the night, night um, you're gonna night. You're gonna be talking about uh, maybe uh, your your own personal interests. They're gonna share some of their interests. You're gonna share some of yours. Um, then in that situation, I can tell you I might carry something like this, right? So why not the Ziba? Well. Because the Ziba is custom and very expensive. You're gonna turn them off a newcomer right away by saying, ah, you know, that's a $600. I forget how much this was. Very, very expensive custom knife. But the Kaiser Doman looks very classic, um, like a classic folding knife. It's simple to operate. Um, it's got good materials. It's, in my opinion, a great example of a budget knife. It's not super scary. It's very straightforward. And, uh, you know, you can explain to people like, hey, you can get a really, really good knife by spending, a lot of those people are used to spending 20 bucks on a knife, 10 bucks on a knife, you know, those, those are like, my dad used to grab, um, whenever he'd break a pocket knife and he was at Home Depot, he would just grab one of those um, $2 lockbacks that are like in a jar, right? And then he would just move on. And I was like, you gotta stop doing that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and so I might bring something like that as a conversation piece, you know? But you, you think about it, you're not gonna bring this, you're like, they're, so they're like, well, so what are you interested in? You know, tell me about you. Well, I really like pocket knives. <laughs> Can you imagine the, the shock? I mean, this is not a knife that you, I mean, this is an, like, if you, if you have like a lifelong friend who knows you're into pocket knives, then you're going to a, you know, you're going to a party and of course it's legal where you live. Then yeah, it might be cool. Like, hey, Joe, look at this. Bam. You know, and Joe's like, wow, cool. Yeah. If you know somebody, then they, yeah, that's okay. But you, you see what I mean? I mean, you got you to gotta pick appropriately. And it, appropriately is different for every single person. You know, but to, this whole, this whole uh, episode is, is based around, like, for whatever reason, my love of, like, my um, Thanksgiving night. Here's why, the Thanksgiving thing. Because a lot of us have, we don't just have one Thanksgiving, right? We have, like, three, like, we have three different Thanksgivings. And I see almost all of my extended family and my extended extended family. And I know I'm going to be around a lot of food, a lot of beverages, and a lot of people in a 12-hour period. And uh, I'm going to use my pocket knife, whether it's to open up packages, open up containers, you know, or just conversation, um, you know, just general conversation with uh, my family members. And uh, I like I like sharing that stuff. You know, it's it's fun. You know, to be around your family uh, and and to you know when you when you're comfortable with your family and extended family uh, and and to share things that you that you love. And if, if you have an opportunity to um, to reach out, you know, to to people who already like and trust you, then the holidays are a great uh, excuse to do that. Thanksgiving, that's why I love, it. and of course Christmas morning because that's when that's the holiday where your knife gets used the most. But I don't know. I feel like you guys definitely, like, I feel like most of you are going to go, yeah, I totally do that. So I, I thought this might be a really fun uh, topic to talk about, guys. But uh, in any case, that's going to be pretty much it for today's episode. Like I said, links in the description. If you've got an itch, an EDC itch, a knife itch, a tool itch, whatever, there's something down there for everybody. So check out my description uh, and use those links. If you enjoy this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.